God bless you. This is Apostle Ann Rigel, and I'm here. God says, and he sent me to tell you that not only do I see you, but I'm going to fight for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to fight for my kingdom, and I'm going to fight for my work to be established in Jesus' name. He's going to do it. And at verse 12. So it is about the power of God's kingdom. God is going to fight for his kingdom power to be demonstrated on the earth. Listen, there is another kingdom that's at work that's been set up on the earth. But God came and he, demonst and, he, and he demonstrates his power to let us know that his kingdom is greater, is stronger, is mightier. The kingdom of God is greater than any other kingdom that's ever been. I don't care if it's the Roman, the Persian, the Babylonian, the modern day America. God's kingdom has more power. And so that he's fighting for his kingdom, he's fighting for the place that he has, he demonstrates his power. But there was a preface. The people were on one accord. The people were continuing in the doctrine, the true gospel. And because of that, many signs and wonders so that God can demonstrate that his kingdom has more power. And I'm praying in the name of Jesus that the true power of God is demonstrated in our ministries, in our churches, in our homes, because we have to overthrow the kingdoms of this world. The Bible says it better. It says like this, until the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So there is a all out war going on in power. Who has true power, real power, authentic power? We don't serve. We don't serve the God that doesn't have any power. And see, if we get out of his way and if we get on one accord with his word and with the gathering of the saints, God will demonstrate his power. Yes, he will. I don't care if you never worked in miracles. I don't care if you said, I'm just a regular old pastor. I'm just a regular person. How can God use me? God can use you because God is fighting a war. Come on. Against the kingdoms of this world. And he's showing himself to be mighty. That's why the signs and wonders have to come. Not so that we can boast. Not so that we can finally authenticate that we are with God. But so that, what did it say? They brought them from neighboring cities. They brought, so that the torment can come off of people's lives. So that the sick can be healed. So that now we are setting up the kingdom of God in the earth realm. Because Satan kingdoms bring sickness, disease, bondage. So, so that people might know that God's real, true kingdom is on the earth. He has to demonstrate his power. And he will do it for us. Yes, he has to demonstrate his power. The Bible says, when you see these things, then you know the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom is not in words, but in power. Demonstration of power. The power to live right. The power to walk right. The power, come on. The power to overcome your flesh. The power to love your enemy. The power, the power to love. Hallelujah. It's only a matter of time before these kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You have to know you show a great God. You have to know his kingdom is greater. And sometimes as a church, we questioning, is God going to do it? You know, the attack is coming against my ministry. The attack is coming against my mind. You know, it looks like so many things are happening. It looks like the world is in chaos. It looks like, you know, there's no prevailing. But the Bible says it will not prevail. His kingdom has power. That's why he has to heal the sick and pull the torment off. Hallelujah. God is going to demonstrate his power. Now look what happened. A jealous spirit rose up. So don't think, don't think, oh, I, I saw a creative miracle just happened. A sign and wonder happened and there's not going to be any opposition. Don't think that that, that demonic kingdom is not going to come against you and try to oppose you because you have power. It will still try. Yes, it will. The weapon will form, but it won't prosper. Because even the apostles, so watch this, verse 17. Then the high priest rose up. 
See what they did? They rose up. Why? Because power was being demonstrated. And all those that were with him, this was a set of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. You think they're happy because you planted a church, because you're doing outreach street ministry? You think they're happy because you're tearing down their kingdom, their kingdom of lies and bondage and sickness and death. They don't like when you snatch people out of the kingdom. Wake up. They don't like it. They were filled with indignation. And they laid their hands on the apostles. And put them in the common prison. So don't think that nothing can touch your house. And nothing could ever happen. Come on. Happen to the apostles. I, I like to say it's a spirit. Uh, a, see what happens is. This is not about. It's not about uh, what's going on. It's, it's about. It's about the territory. It's about the kingdomship. It's about kingdoms. And you study the seven mountains of influence. The enemy wants to influence a nation. And he don't want to do he doesn't want to use a lot of work. So he wants to get in the media. He wants to get into the family. He wants to get into religion. Come on. He wants to take those seven mountains and produce a worship. So right now you have entire nations that are dedicated to Satan, that are worshiping him through any and how he infiltrated us through media. Through the family breakdown, come on, through religion, false religion, and you got entire nations. So when Jesus took, when, when Jesus, when Satan took Jesus up and showed him a vision of all the kingdoms of this world, you know, why wasn't he bartering for money? Why wasn't he, because a nation of worship and souls worshiping is more important than money. Come on, somebody. I don't care if it's only three people in your ministry, two people on one accord, worshiping God. They're building an altar, hallelujah, to the most high God, to Yahweh. And they're pulling down idolatry, demonic altars, the altar of pride, the altar of Baal, the altar. Come on. So, so don't underestimate, hallelujah, the fight. Don't underestimate the fight. Don't think you're not in a fight because we're fighting for kingdoms. We're fighting for people. We're fighting for the work of God, the message to go forth. Hallelujah. And so in the night, the angel of the Lord came, opened the prison doors, brought them out. And he said, go stand in the temple and speak to the apostles all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. So what they do? They went right back to the work. So now I'm talking about the work, the work, the work, the assignment. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is, and I'm getting excited. I got to calm myself down. Hallelujah. The assignment has a strategy. And, and I, I like to call it like the apostolic blueprint. So if, if you look on my, um, um, website page what the father gave me was apostolic equipping pattern in motion in motion so the spiritual pattern by how are you going to take these kingdoms how are you going to do it is a strategy okay so many times we know god's will i know god wants me to start a church i know god has called me to be a prophet i know god has called me to do outreach to hand out shirts to homeless people okay but now I need to know his way. Now I need the, the strategy of how to go in, take off the captives, and then carry them off. Well, we know one strategy that the Bible has given us. You can't enter a strong man's house, come on, unless you first bind him up. So you can't take over a nation. You can't take up a territory until you bind up that ruling spirit. Everybody understanding me? Bind it up. So a lot of times, so I'm going into ministries and the first thing I'm, I'm, the Lord is telling me more prayer, more groundwork of prayer, more prayer, toil, till the ground because we think we're just affecting our little neighborhood, but territorial demons and spirits are watching. They're getting filled with indignation. Okay. And so they're going to try to rise up against you. 
It could just be your media. It could just be you're passing out flyers and the copy machine breaks. But they're rising up in indignation. But God is going to fight for his work. It's his work. He's going to fight for it. And let me give you eh, a word to the wise. I was, I was uh, doing a mentoring call this morning from John 7. Jesus did not move his strategy. Listen to the strategy. He did not go up to the feast in Judea until the appointed time. That is a part of strategy. When you're in a war, you don't just, you don't just lay your hands out. You don't just bum rush. You wait for the strategy. You wait for the right moment. So sometimes, sometimes we say, why is it not coming to not? Because you know the will of God, but you don't know the way. You get the way, prophets, evangelists, pastors, in your secret place. I said this is the year 2017 of success via wisdom. So what you didn't get last year, the souls you missed last year, the you know, you need the strategy. Come on. Listen, it didn't say that they automatically knew the strategy. Read this word again. It said that, it said that in the night, an angel of the Lord appeared, opened the, opened the prison doors and brought them out. They had to wait on God. Some of us are trying to vindicate ourselves and fight for ourselves and fight for this work. You know what I say? Get off of YouTube making videos about who don't like your ministry. Hey, forget about all of that. Because you already know that the more the power of God is demonstrated, the more that they're going to be filled with indignation because you're taking off territory. Unless you don't understand what you're doing. A soul is a land that now has a seed in it that can produce the fruit of Christ, the fruit of righteousness. And so they're fighting for that land, that territory. Come on. And so, and so, as the power of God is demonstrated, they are going to become indignant, meaning that indignation means I'm not going to just let you go forward. I am going to oppose the work. There is, <laughs> we get discouraged. I have gotten discouraged. Lord, I'm trying to do all this stuff in your name. You know, the finances are being hindered. It, it, you know, the city won't give me the permit to build. Come on, I'm saying something. But it's the territory. And that's why you need a strategy. How do I go in, God? How do I take this land? You have, you have to lay before the Father and he has to give it to you. Okay. Okay. You, you be on one accord and you be in unity. And God will demonstrate his power. See, you don't have to go to 25 conferences to figure out. Uh, I, I don't be like T.D. Jakes ministry. I don't be like uh, uh, Catherine Kuhlman. Okay, the same God that walked through them can work with you and demonstrate his power. It's the same, it's the same Holy Spirit. All you got to do, come on, is be waiting on him in unity. Did that, were they not waiting? And the, the Bible says it came in like a rushing wind. Come on, God is going to demonstrate his power. If, okay, God is going to do his part. You, you activate your faith. You believe God. He's going to do his part. I, I am learning to get out of the Holy Spirit's way. To get out of his way and let him demonstrate his power. There are times in your services. There's time when he'll tell you, lay hands, pray, stay. And then the power of God has to show up. It has to show up. Okay? So you let God demonstrate his power. Right? You let God prove his work. So many of us are trying to prove to old pastors, old friends, uh, Facebook, that we, ha we, we have a true work of God. But you let God prove his work. When, when he brought the prison walls down, the bondage, the thing that was trying to keep the work hindered, you know, when God kicks the door down and, and, and lets his work come forth, nobody has to question whether or not. If you look at John chapter 7, Jesus did not go up to Galilee. He stayed in Galilee. He did not go up to Judea. Watch this. 
His brothers were mocking him. Some of you people are mocking you. Uh, you ain't got but a few people. Ain't nothing happening. Uh, if you got some power and anointing, your family is mocking you. Your friends are mocking Other ministers are mocking you. Come on, I'm saying something. Jesus had to work with the Holy Spirit and wait. He had to wait. And at the appointed time, he, he was getting what I call a download. He said, my time is not yet come. It's not my time to show myself to the world. See, some of us, some of us is not our time to be out there. I don't mean out on social media. I mean, you know, God say, go to uh, Jamaica, but you got to go in the right season and you got to go with the right people and you got to go with the right plan. Come on. And so you have to wait for the Holy Spirit to establish the work that he's doing through you. And, and if you have the wrong motive, you will move ahead of his time. So, so back to John seven. So I think it's verse 15, 16. It says that, and then he went in the temple and taught and they marveled at him saying, this man has never learned. Where did he get this from? Because at the appointed time, God proved that Jesus was doing the work from the father. And he said, why are you marveling? Because God showed up. Basically, I'm paraphrasing. Why are you marveling? Because I did one miracle. He said, because if you knew who I was, where I came from, then you would know. You would know. So, so sometimes there's a season where the world is not taking note. And the Holy Spirit has a strategy where you're hidden. You're undercover. Hallelujah. Because if Jesus had gone up. Before his time, he said, I cannot go right now because the Jews sought to kill him. So, so look, look, they were in a war. They're in a battle, right? They're fighting these territorial principalities and powers and these Sadducees. And they're, they're, you know, indignation and contention. And they threw them in the prison. They couldn't just go and say, oh, we're going to go and start fighting for ourselves. And fight. they had to wait because God had a fight. God was going to fight for them, just like he's going to fight for you. And the work that God has called you to, God is going to fight for you. It takes patience. Could they have didn't, gotten into prison and said, oh, God forgot about us. What happened? I'm discouraged. I want to quit. They knew that the work that they were doing was not their work. Come on. This is in your obedience. And so it goes on to say, God directly, the angel of the Lord directly stood in the way and pulled the prison walls down. Why? Because the work had to be done. So I came to give you the word of the Lord that, listen, listen, you might have been hindered. Come on. You might have been blocked. Come on. You might have been thrown in the bondage of religion and what people were going to say. Come on. And how they told you and how they taught you in the tradition of man. But God is going to set his work free. Yes, he is. He is going to fight for his work. If you're doing his work. He's going to fight for you, his kingdom and his work. My third point, my third point. I don't know how long I've been talking, but this is my third point. Listen, a lot of us want <laughs> the national acclaim, you know, um, Watch this. There's a point in advertising and marketing where you get to such a standard. You become a household name where you don't have to promote yourself. Hey, that other people begin to promote you. Watch this. In verse 33, they were mad because, again, they were released to teach. It says in verse 33, um, Acts 5, when they heard this, they were furious. Now they plotted to kill them. And then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee, a teacher of the law. He held in respect by all the people. And basically he said, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves. Some people like this have rose up before. And they, had, they drew a couple of people to them. He said, watch this. Uh, and then there was Judas of Galilee. He rose up and he drew away many people, but he perished. And all who obeyed him were dispersed. Verse 38. And now I say to you, keep away from these men. See, they didn't have to advocate for themselves. 
All they had to do is continue in the work. It's of men. It will come to nothing of God. You can. Okay, New King James. So, so you know, sometimes we're in a tizzy leaders. And that's my last point. You can't overthrow it. You can't stop the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so they agreed with him. And they let him go. They beat him up. That's what it says. Beat him up. They commanded that they should not speak the name of Jesus. See, some of us have gone through a battle. See, there's a war and then there's battles in the war. That was a battle they were in. They won one battle, came out of prison. They went back in teaching. Now they're trying to, you know, put them back into prison. They didn't win this last battle. They got beat up. There are some hits you might take in the kingdom. But they're going to win the war. So you got to know what battle, come on, you're supposed to fight. And what battle God is supposed to fight for you. Hallelujah. And some of us are getting angry. We're fighting. We're frustrated, you know, with your spouse, with your church members, with the people in the world and what they say about you, how they talk about you, what they post on Facebook. Let me tell you something. That ain't my battle right there. Hallelujah. That's not the battle. That's not the battle. The battle is over the souls and the territory. So I'm not going to quit doing what God has called me to do. I'm not going to quit the work. I'm not. Come on. Somebody out there. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So what did it say? They departed from the presence of the council rejoicing. That they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name's sake. Say so we don't read that part. They didn't leave out. Oh, I can't believe this happened to me. I can't believe I had, you know, I'm supposed to be a prophet. How come this happened? I'm so, no, guess what? God counted us worthy to take that hit in his kingdom. And we're going to reign with him. So, so you have to know, you got to get to the place where God can use someone else to validate you. Where God can use someone else Hey, to announce who you are. Come on. You can't, come on. You got to get to the place where you know when to fight and when not to fight. Who to fight. That's called strategy. Hallelujah. And if you do not apply the principle of, from the Holy Spirit, the apostolic blueprint, every building has a blueprint on how it's to be erected. So every work has a blueprint. You... You know that the will is to upright the building, but the way is the blueprint. So sometimes, sometimes we don't know the way. We don't know the blueprint. God, I know you want me to go to the nations. God, I know you want me to say, but I don't know how. So you lay on your face. You wait for the Holy Ghost to give you the blueprint, to give you the instructions. Come on. He will give it to you. He will give it to you. And listen, you can't take somebody else's blueprint. You can't take somebody else's way. Come on. The Bible says Jesus leads us. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He calls his fivefold people. He gives you the vision. You got to stay in your watch and get the way and get the strategy. So I'm just going to pray for the strategy. Because if you overstep the strategy, you can cause you can cause the mission to be aborted. See, the mission was not just about them, Peter. It was about all others who wanted to preach the gospel in that nation, in that city. So you got to look at the bigger picture. Glory be to God. And no, it's not about me. This, this spirit that's fighting me is, is about the territory. It's about the power of God. It's about the work of God. It's about the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. If I got some intercessors in the line, I just ask that you would intercede for me because I'm on the open network. Hallelujah. But I'm excited and I just want to come before you and just talk to you about the strategy, the strategy, 
the strategy. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I feel a lot of hindrance on this broadcast. I feel a lot of hindrance that wants to come forth. But we bind it in the name of Jesus. We bind the words being contristed. We bind confusion. We bind distraction. And, Father, we speak that from this day forward, we will wait and we will wait for your strategy. We will wait for the strategy. We won't just move in our flesh. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because you, you have given us the vision. You have given us the will. It's your work. We're your people, Father. Call by your name. And, and you are going to do it. Hallelujah. I got somebody coming to my door. I got all kinds of distractions. Jesus. <laughs> So I just want to say, let God fight for you. Let God fight. 